Now, if you've watched us before, you'll know I have a fascination with small conventional balers, but we have a new addition for baling our hay this week. Oh yes, we do, because I have purchased a bale sledge. Yes, finally, the bales are not gonna come out individually and we haven't got to try and stack them into eights to pick them up with a flat eight grab. They are all going to go in there by themselves. Fingers crossed, that's what happens. So in this video, we are going to show you how bale sledge works, all the processes that go into it and how that, I'm gonna say sorcery works. As someone actually commented that in their last video that it is sorcery of how a bale sledge works. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail of how that works when we bale our hay. So this is a brown square frame sledge, which is the one that I wanted. It's the one that I wanted to get. Now it's only cost me 320 quid, so it doesn't actually owe me that much. You can pick up sledges for reasonable money. I think from dealers, they're probably only somewhere between sort of 500 and 700. Now this was through an auction the other day. I know we had to go all the way to Dorset to get it, but it's the one I wanted. Now, Browns also used to make tubular frame ones, which are a little bit more simple and didn't have automatic opening, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now, these ones here have like a hopper type design in the top compared to a chute design like I used in the straw baling video the other day where I had a Lawrence Edwards sledge. So this one, you've got a little bit more room for error of how the bale falls in. Well, that's, uh, that's the whole idea anyway. Hopefully that works. And then when we start baling in a minute, as you'll see, we'll talk about how all this works and how this all goes back into the, into the sledge. Now, generally speaking, just a quick sort of thing, the bale drops into there, it will go down there and fill two into that side, then that'll flip over and then it'll fill two into that side, then it'll fill two into there and then two into there. And then once these two flaps here open, one, two, once they're pushed up by the bales, they'll automatically open the back of the bale sledge. So then that will open up and, well, allow everything out. Now Mike's just come up here because we're going to take it down to the workshop. I'm going to show you why. So on the back of here, on most balers, there is a hook or a clevis pin system to be able to put your bale sledge in on the back of your baler to be able to use it. And then generally one in the middle to be able to tow it behind for transporting purposes. But there's nothing on this baler, so we need to make something up. Now on there, you'll just see under there, there is a little bit of a drawbar and a pin system on the front of the sledge. So what we're gonna do, or what have I, in, I say we, the royal we, what Mike's gonna do, is hopefully make up a ball hitch system. So put a ball hitch on the back of the baler and a ball hitch on the back of the sledge. The idea of that is that we can actually just tow the sledge around with a quad bike and get it into the field rather than trying to tow it behind the baler. Because when you've got the sledge on and the baler, it does turn out to be quite a long affair. And being that we've got very narrow access and only 12 foot gates, it might make it a little bit painful. So that's that. So as I said, this is a brown square frame. They also made tubular frames and the one I used the other day when I was baling the straw was a Lawrence Edwards sledge. Now the brown square frame and the Lawrence Edwards are both automatic opening on the back so once you've got eight bales in there the back opens up and lets them out. Now a downfall to that with an automatic opening sledge is that sometimes your sledge will open where you don't want it to so if you're doing the outsides of your fields going around suddenly it might drop a load of bales exactly where you want to drive the tractor down through later on so you then still want to get out and move them manually so they're not in the way. Now, with an obviously a manual opening sledge, you can control where you let your bales out, which is sometimes a lot, lot better. I prefer an automatic sledge because I've always got lots to think about when I'm baling, and it'll let them out where I want them, to, where it'll let them out. So I never found that too much of a problem. So hopefully, we get on fine with this. Now, the other downfall about bale sledge could be if you've got lots of molehills in your grass. So then, when you bale it and you're dragging your bales along the ground ending up with all that soil in your bales. Now, if that's the case, just drop the bale sledge off and do it singly, otherwise you're gonna ruin all your bales. Now, hopefully we haven't got very many moles down there. When I mowed the other day, it didn't seem that we've got any down there, so fingers crossed that is the case. All right, so Mike's got it hitched up to the telehandler. He's gonna take it down to the workshop and make up his brackets, and we'll catch up with it then. I'm gonna go and Ted Mahay, and then we'll see how we go on. Mike has come up with a contraption and it looks beautiful. So as I said, we want to do it with a ball hitch. So he has welded on the uh, ball hitch attachment there, look, to there. So we can put that now behind the quad bike and behind the baler because look at this smart job here, eh? Look at this. What a job. Now that is proper, absolutely perfect. It's out of the way, it's tidy, but easy to use. And when you put your crook on top, you don't end up, you know, cracking your knuckles on what's above. Well, hopefully anyway. So all ready to go for tomorrow now. 
Right, so in a flash, we'll be in a field, ready to go baling, which is tomorrow, but today for you guys. Anyway, here we go. All right, so here's the bale sledge, all hitched up behind the quad bike for transportation purposes. And now we can put it on the back of the baler. Now we've baled some of the outside rows around the outside, just so, just makes it easier because it's a very small field. So let's hitch it on and see if it works. So as you can see, this first bale is just about to come out. And as it comes down, it is going to slide across to the right-hand side or left-hand side as we're watching it. And that will come down in. And as that came down, it flicked across one of the arms for the next bale to come down and go to the other side. So as it slides down and behind that, it will push that arm across so the next bale comes in behind the first bale. So as it's coming down through, you see it pop down, slide through and push that bar back across. It will in a minute, I promise. There we go. And I'll push that arm back and then for the fourth bale to come in behind the second bale. So here it comes, dropping down through, back in behind the second bale. Now the fifth bale will come down and into the middle because the two outside bales, the third and the fourth bale, have pushed the two arms across. So now no bales can go to the sides, they can only go into the middle. Now that front sort of quadrant which is flicking forward and back will push one bale to one side and one to the other. I know my rows are a little bit close here on the left so I'm dragging up those outside rows which I've pushed out of the way because they're still a little bit damp. But now the seventh bale is coming down through in front of that one and lifting up that foot getting ready to release the bales once they come out of the back. So now it's coming down the last bale, the eighth bale coming down through, flicking that foot up and out they release. And as you can see, it's just releasing a little bit early and leaving one bale stuck out. We got all of the middle of the field gobbled up last night and we've still got the outside rounds just because down the bottom of the field it was still a little bit damp it wasn't green but it just felt a little bit damp so i thought you know what we'll bail that today now as i mentioned in the video it was the sledge was actually leaving one bale a little bit out of the main eight when it dropped them now josh pointed it out that what we could do is just make a little adjustment here on the wires to be able to allow these feet. So let me just show you what we're going to do. And then when we bail the outside, hopefully it will be spot on. So as you've just seen, it fills the outside first and then it fills the middle. Now, these two little feet, I can make those move up through like that. So one comes up with these two bales. And then when that one comes up on the last bale that comes in, it then releases the automatic part of the back of the sledge. Now, as that bale comes in, it's just opening the door just before that bale joins in with the other eight. So we're gonna make this wire just a tiny little bit longer on the adjustment there. And hopefully that will make it absolutely spot on. So I'm gonna get this now raked out and we'll then go baling after we've made those adjustments. Right, so I've just adjusted this up. So I've let that 
cable back. You can see where it was. Now it's about there, so there's about an inch difference. So hopefully that'll make enough difference and not too much to let the bales out evenly. So as you saw there, we nearly got the sledge working perfectly, but I adjusted it up a little bit too much and then it wouldn't release the bales. And then we released it back again and it still dropped that last bale. But it's, it's not the end of the world because at the end of the day, the sledge is doing the hard work for us, which is putting them into eight so we can pick them up the flat eight. All we've got to do is just push that one bale up. So there's still some little bit of adjustment here. But Mike did have a good point, to be fair, and that, that is, you know, the sledge is slightly twisted. There is a bit of, I don't know if you can see it in this, but you can just see the bars going up through. So whether that is what's playing it up, I don't know. But anyway, it is definitely doing the hard work for us and putting them into eight. So I'm very, very happy that we've got the sledge, very happy with the browns. It's doing what we wanted to do. Now, there are some adjustments we need to make because I don't know if you could see in the video or whether we actually caught it, but as you go around the corner on this one, with the flap on the back of the bagler, we, it's, as it goes around the corner, it sort of goes out to one side. It doesn't... The flap comes to like here. Yeah, so the one, what did we lose? About three bales, Max, yeah. out the side when you're going around the corner? Which, it, again, it isn't the end of the world for the volume of bales we're doing. If we were doing thousands, it'd be very, very different. To be fair, I'd probably invest in a, one of those modern sledges, which have got like a conveyor belt along the bottom. So you're not actually dragging them on the floor you're putting them onto there and then when you've got the full eight it slides them off the back so have a type into youtube uh, like uh conveyor belt bale sledge or something like that because they are amazing to watch max I saw aren't they one that put them into tens but it was like up like that so it did eight like we do and then it put two like that on the end oh, i haven't seen them we'll have to look for that dude i'd like to see that that'd be really cool it was the video it was the same people as the video we were watching where they did fifteen thousand little bales a year 15,000 little bales. That's mad, isn't it? Anyway, very happy. That is hay and straw 2024 done for us, isn't it, Max? Yep. So we're all done. We're all sorted. Well happy that we got the ball hitch on for the quad bike to be able to take it around. I think that is definitely a big winner. We just need to make some adjustments so that it works differently behind. Maybe, maybe not. It's just doing what we wanted it to do. But hopefully in this, you have seen what a bale sledge does and how it works but there's loads of different sledges on the market there's some things i haven't mentioned are things like cook sledges cooks are probably the one of the most popular sledges out there and i'd like to know in the comments below what sledge you've got or what one you recommend so other people watching this video can see some get some decent advice from people who've done a lot more than what i've done with this so yeah let us know in the comments below but if you enjoyed straw hay and straw 2024 max yeah 
It's been cool, isn't it? Yeah. We've really enjoyed it. Anyway, I'm sure we'll do more next year. But we've now definitely got to get some fencing done, Max, haven't we? Yeah. Because we have got, we've got the post bang. I've got to finish that project. We've got loads of other projects for you to catch up on as well on the channel. So make sure you stay tuned and we'll see you very, very soon. Cheerio. Bye.